Right, so the next stage of this is to um, turn it into the box in two parts and the way we're going to do this is by stacking the face and just cutting a profile through. Now what I have changed is you can see I've now put the grooves um, across the top and the bottom. So if I look at the side profile, which is where we need to be drawing, uh, so we'll just go to new sketch, click on to OK and then shift and W for work plane. What you'll actually see is we've got the profile of the box and the grooves already there. Okay, now it's fairly straightforward here. What I'm going to do is draw where I think um, my box needs to be. And I'm going to start from the bottom corner just to project um, this going up. Now I'm going to do it initially um, 60. It doesn't matter if it's slightly over. Uh, but it does need to be outside of the box. Okay. Right now, at that point, I need the steps um, to come down at certain intervals. So I'm just going to draw some lines across um, here. And I'm just guessing these at the time being because I haven't set them. But if I then say that that line has to be, and if we say, and from this line that one also has to be 10 and that's got quite a nice step down there that's that bit and if I go from that corner you can see that Pro Desktop's actually helping me now because it's clicking onto the pieces um, that I need to draw so from this point of view, we're going to go down there, and I'm just going to trim those. And you can see that that's actually now shaded the bit that I'm going to try and cut through. Now what I will do though is redefine. Okay, redefine offset. That's okay. Where that is, just so we can actually extrude that now. So all I'm going to do now is just go to Feature and I'm going to extrude but I'm going to subtract that bit down there, so subtract material, yes. Feature, subtract again. So the extrude material, subtract, but this time I come this way. And subtract again, click on to OK. And then what I should be left with, hopefully, is my step box. I have been. So now what I need to do is I need to decide the best way of making this hollow. Um, now the best way would have been before I extruded that to actually have shelled this out. So what I will do is I'll do that now. Now we've got the drawing done. So if I then go back to um, features and if I get rid of the extrusions like so and hit the traffic lights and if I turn the base around and I am also going to get rid of I think these um, other extrusions that I've done there so if I get rid of extrusion 3 and that should make it a solid base now at that point I should be able to select the bottom of it and then go to feature shell solids and from shell solids if I say I want a 3mm wall click on to OK it should give me a 3mm wall to make that box empty now the next stage I need to do is to go back to my drawings where it's got work planes and on this sketch if I activate them looks like they already are so if I go to feature extrude extrude that way to subtract and do exactly the same feature extrude and subtract I should now have an empty box okay so what I'm going to do is just go to file save copy as but I'm going to save this one as top box okay now at that point the next stage that I'm going to do is reverse what I've just done there as well. So from this point of view, 
And if I go back to features, and if I take away my extrusions, and like so, and hit the traffic lights, if I bring back some of the ones that I actually placed in, so I think it was extrusion 3, bring those back, update, you can see the bottom bits now come back for me. And what I need to do is get rid of extrusion 2 and do exactly the same. But this time, what I do is I go to the top face and I do exactly the same. So feature, shell sides, type in 3mm, click on to OK. Ooh, and I wonder why that's happened. So, um, feature. Uh, I've already got a shell activated there, so if I drop that one back and try it now, so if I go to feature, shell sides, and I'm typing 3, click on to OK, brilliant, and then this time if I go back to my features, sorry the work plane one, and activate that sketch, just by drawing on here and this time what I need to do is I need to take the top part off so the top and the bottom fit. The other way I'm going to do that is quite simple. Um, all I'm going to do is draw from that line going up, draw from that line going up, join these two boxes together. It doesn't matter if it's not um, in sync and then if I delete those sides there hopefully what should happen is that should have started doing that next piece there so let me see if it has so if I just draw that line going back up and if I draw that line going back up just do it one going across and trim the boxes. Yeah, perfect. And now I do exactly the same as before. So feature, extrude, and I extrude that one, subtract, and go to feature, extrude that one, and push it through there and subtract. And then I save this one as file. Save copy as, and this time I'm going to call it base box. Okay, and that was quite fairly straightforward. Um, what I am going to do though, is why I've got this one here, is I'm going to draw a plan, plan view around there. And the way I'm going to do that is go to base, go to new sketch, click on to OK. And the name of this sketch show I'm going to call internal. And you'll see why in a second. Now the internal, if I click on to OK, should then appear up on this side and it shows it's activated. Now what I'm quickly going to do is use these grid marks to snap onto my drawing. Okay, so um, I might be better doing these in rectangles to be honest. So if I just draw quick rectangles, like so, and then from there, if I draw my line going across, from there to there, from there to Actually, it needs to go right the way across here. And then hopefully what I should be able to do then is first of all get rid of these lines that I don't need. Get rid of those two lines. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. And then hopefully what I should be able to do then is extrude the bottom piece up. Now what I'm going to do is look under 
see whether I can change or hide the other views that we've got on there as well. So let me try Windows, do I need to do, no, Whipper, hide of the sketches, there we go. Right, at that point, what I'm looking at is taking all the other features out of here. So there we go, taking them all out. That should bring you back to the original drawer. Then click back onto work plans. And there's our drawing there. And if I then go to feature extrude, and if I extrude up to the size that I want it to be, which is probably going to be, I'm going to say 70. And click onto OK. And then I'm ready to start printing the details of this box. So if I then go to face, click onto the face there, and then go to work plane, new work plane, and I'm going to call this DVD slots. When it appears over on to this part, there it is, DVD slots, new sketch, click onto OK. And I'm going to make the slots now for the DVDs to fit in. So we know the actual measurements of the DVD. And we can always move these around. It was 136 by 16. And again, like I say, all I need to do with this is just to click onto that one. And move this in a bit. And it might be that we've actually done the box too small on the outside, but I'll just check in the measurements now. 3.6 is about right. Okay, so what I'll need to do then, in this case, is just shorten this one slightly, if I can. And change that to back to 1.36.8, why don't we do it now? Okay, that's our problem. Let's get rid of those marks out and we'll try another one. So I'm going to draw one. It's 136 by 16. Okay. And at that point, I'm going to control C and control V it. So they're together. And then hopefully, I should be able to get these to slot into the box. Now initially we'd left a centimetre for this box to, to work. So let's place that one back. And so we've roughly got about two millimetres by the looks of that one in between these two, which again um, shouldn't be too much of a problem. I don't want to be changing the, the size of the boxes, so let's lock those down. And three six, brilliant. That one needs to go back to sixteen. And then hopefully if I highlight it, I should be able to move that one just a little bit nearer to the top. If you don't let me. There we go, so what we need to do then is activate the sketch. Just move it just a little bit nearer. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just click on to feature, extrude profile, extrude this bit going down, and I'm going to take it down to probably 10mm off the bottom, and where this needs to be sort of slotted in. So if we say 50, that should be okay, and subtract material. And now all I need to do is on base, 
and create a new sketch on base. So just join these back up and just go to feature, extrude, and this time those need to go up to six, maybe even seven because it was a three mil. So I'll click on to subtract material, click on to OK, and we're starting to get the internal box as well. Right, so I'm just going to go to File, Save Copy As, and that's going to be internal. So I'll save those internal, click on to save, and then the next thing I need to do is create the assembly drawing. So we're going to go to File, Save Copy As, and this time internal 2, just in case. Um, and click on to save and with internal 2 all I'm going to do there is with the DVD slots is remove these parts and make it into a solid box just in case that ridge isn't what I'm after save that one. Okay so that's all the parts done. The next stage is to show how we render the box.